many friends celebrating a foundational person in our lives. Um, like, let's see, just a minute. So like so many people here, um, my intersection with Eric comes from the LRC, but I didn't actually get to know him. So I, my first year of graduate um, studies at LRC was Eric's last year. And so I didn't know him very well. He was over in Cushing's lab. I was mostly in Herb's um, offices and labs. And so again, I didn't get to know Eric when he was first at LRC, but I first sort of formed a link with Eric and with Jane in Cambridge. So I was working with um, John Burks on a site in, um, in Norfolk, Dismere. And the year I went over to Cambridge one summer to work on Dismere and Eric and Jane were there at Cambridge. And so they were very generous in helping me um, get adjusted to Cambridge. And they took me to um, a, a formal dinner at Sydney Sussex College. And so that's really the year I think that I formed a friendship with Eric and with Jane and then that started our collaboration together. If I think of Eric's role in my life, it's really um, as a master corer, he was a total genius at getting great sequences out of legs. And he was also a master at finding sites. And so um, basically my much one foundation of my career has been working on the climate history of the Great Plains and Eric always knew the best lakes to work on. Chances are if I needed a site, he had already cored it, but if he hadn't, he knew where to go. And so I think of Eric as playing a major role in basically, um, again, finding all these fabulous sites that we worked on to get many of them together. So these are a whole suite of lakes um, that Eric, this is actually a slide from one of Eric's former talks, but these are all sites that he mostly did the pollen work on. A few of them, some other people did the work on, but many of these all, but a few of them, I ended up doing diatom work on to reconstruct climate history in collaboration again with Eric. And so what I wanna do is just walk through a few of these foundational sites that we worked on together. Um, we started out working on Moon Lake, which is a small deep lake in North Dakota. And this is a figure from Kate Laird, who is my PhD student. And she um, used a diatom record to infer the drought history of, of the Moon Lake region. And she was um, nicely pointed out this long period of history in the medieval times when um, Moon Lake and the region was really quite dry, what, what are now known as, as these um, sort of multi-decadal centennial st style mega droughts. But we also had a long Holocene record again, showing the drought history of the region and the, um, and the um, period in the mid Holocene that was extremely dry. And in collaboration with doing with this, um, Eric did a beautiful pollen diagram. And so um, yeah, I think I'm frozen. Nope. Okay, just a minute. Oh, here we go. So um, Eric did, as somebody else said earlier, he was known for doing these beautiful detailed records. And so at Moon Lake, he did this gorgeous pollen diagram tracing the vegetation history. We already knew at the time that um, the sort of overall picture of the vegetation history of the Great Plains, this transition from um, spruce forest in the late glacial period to mixed deciduous forest to oak savanna and then into prairie um, gra grassland. But Eric showed with this lovely detailed, very high resolution record that the story isn't quite so simple. And that there was this really high frequency sort of multi-decadal variability in terms of alternation between during the grassland periods between things dominated by grass and some of the drier herb herbaceous taxa. And so this was just exemplary again of, of this beautiful, beautiful high resolution record where we learn some things that we might not have known otherwise from co more coarsely resolved things. You've heard already about Kettle Lake, but again, this was a um, site that was surprisingly rich in its history. It's a teeny, teeny lake, as you can see by this figure here. It's only a couple hundred meters across when it was cored. I wasn't there, but they just strung a rope across so that they could get core the deep spot but it has this really wonderful, wonderful history. 
it's just a dimple in the landscape. You would probably never suspect that this, you know, sort of simple little lake would reveal such a wonderful history. But again, this lake has been giving and giving and giving, and I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about this from um, Joe Donovan. But we initially started working on it. We, um, it led by um, Jim Clark, a whole group of us worked on a sequence from um, Kettle Lake in which we looked at a period of the mid Holocene in very high resolution. And so this is one of the figures from that paper. And again, you can see the um, wealth of information that you get when you look at these high resolution records. So in particular, you can see in this mid Holocene interval, alternations between grasses and ambrosia. So in the Great Plains, you have grasses during the wet periods, more ambrosia dominated landscape in the dry periods. And there's also a charcoal record here. And so in the Great Plains, as, as is true of many grasslands, you get these, um, you get these fires during wet years, not dry years, because you're building a lot more um, fuel to burn. And so this was sort of the first effort at working on Kettle Lake um, collaboratively. And I had a diatom record, but I, I'm not showing that. But nonetheless, the, the very detailed high resolution work that you can see pre presented here. Much later, um, Eric did a detailed record of the whole history of Kettle Lake. And so this is showing again, this very high frequency variability that you find in these Great Plains sites with these alternation between grass dominated intervals with, in wetter periods and Artemisia and Ambrosia dominated intervals in drier periods. So um, later I had a, a postdoc, Will Hobbs, who worked on a diatom record from Kettle Lake, again, collaborating with Eric and Joe and so forth. And in this record, he um, grouped the diatoms into four different groups, ranging from things that, that grow in deep, um, fairly fresh lakes to things that go, grow in shallow, chemically stratified lakes. And we paired this record together with um, the work that Eric and Joe Donovan had done to reconstruct drought history and alternations in lake depth over time. Um, one of the only lakes that Eric didn't core before I got there was Lake George. So we worked on Lake George together. It's a lovely site in North Dakota. Um, for me, it's one of the magical sites. It's a meromictic lake, meaning it doesn't um, mix every year. It's about 43 meters deep. And so um, I had read that there were haptophytes, these algae that produce alkanones in the lake. So I convinced Eric and a group of other colleagues to core Lake George in 2009. And so here again is Eric um, at his best, um, graciously taking all the, yeah, taking all the cold as at the base of the core. And so, yeah, we cored Lake George in 2009, um, for bitterly cold, but a wonderful, wonderful experience to try to reconstruct the history of that lake. So as I mentioned, um, a former person had done some research on this site and noted that there were haptophytes, these groups of um, algae that produce alkanones. And this is about the time that organic geochemistry was becoming uh, more popularized. And so we collaborated together with Jamie Tony and Yang Sung Huang to um, put together an alkanone reconstruction from those cores. Unfortunately, that reconstruction's never been published because it tells a story that's really quite different to what we think. Well, the alkanones tell us the temperature history is something that's very different than um, what we think happened. And between Eric and I and Jamie and Yang Sung, we could never agree on the correct interpretation. Nonetheless, it was a great experience. We actually um, went back several times later to, there's a research station by, from North Dakota on the lake and we went back and presented our research um, at something called the Grass and Beef Symposium. So of course, as I said, Eric always was there before me. I moved to Nebraska um, in around 2000 and wanted to move from working in the Northern Plains to working in the Nebraska Sand Hills. And as I said, Nebraska, um, Eric had been there before coring. So we collaborated together on this lake called Beaver Lake. So Nebraska, you probably don't think of as having many lakes, but in fact, it's got thousands of them. Most of them are either deflation hollows in the sand 
or they're formed from blockage of drainage channels by migrating sand during dry periods. So we worked on Beaver Lake, which is shown here. So here's a wet period where Beaver Lake is joined with a lake to the south called Rat Lake. And then during dry periods, such as the dry dust bowl, they become isolated. And so I had a PhD student, Jens Schmieder, who did a diatom record and Eric did the um, pollen. So we already knew something about the drought history of the, of the region from the um, abundant dune and list record um, that's been compiled for, for a whole group of people by a group of people from the Great Plains. And so that record is shown here. In this particular record, I want to point out this interval around 5,000 years ago when there is no record of dune migration or of loess activity, so clearly a relatively wet period. And this is a um, pollen diagram of Eric's from that particular site, um, Beaver Lake. And so he showed again that there was a lot of charcoal during that particular wet period, um, an expansion of grasses relative to other herbaceous things. And so we have this enhanced fire during wet intervals. So in recent years, a whole group of us, you've already heard about this trip, but a group of us met a few times to take a summer camping trip. Um, so this is the trip to Harney Peak in the Black Hills in 2008. And it was really a magical experience. We all tried um, climbed up to watch the fireworks on Mount Rushmore. And when the fireworks were over, there were dozens of people moving down the peak of from the peak to the parking lot for over an hour, just lit by flashlights. And everybody was perfectly quiet after a, you know maybe 15 minutes. We all hiked down the peak from Harney Peak in the dark with flashlights mostly silent. But that was one of two really lovely um, group camping trips that we made together. Just again, a group of people that formed friendships from the LRC. You've seen this picture in the migrating um, um, slides that we had at the beginning, but we also two years ago went to Teddy Roosevelt National Park. Um, and this is a lovely picture of Eric and Jane from that particular site. So I'm not very good at endings, so I thought I would um, end with a quote from Willa Cather, those of you that are not American. She was a Great Plains author um, from Nebraska and wrote many, many wonderful books about the Great Plains region. But this is a quote from her about the power of lakes and the ability of lakes to help us be free. So I'll end on that note. And thanks again, everyone.